Hey, fourth graders, today we are going to be beginning our journey on learning about angles. So get ready and let's go. The first thing that we need to know is what an angle actually is. The angle is the space between two straight lines when they come together at a endpoint called a vertex. You guys have actually learned about angles and seen angles in shapes, like a triangle has three angles. In fact, that's actually what the word means. Tri means three angles, three angles. So it has an angle at each of the points. A square has four angles, again, at each of the points. So when you think about it, there's angles in all of our shapes except for circles. And we also have angles all around us. I want you to take a second and look around the room that you're in and see if you can find some angles. I guarantee you can. In fact, I see an angle right here behind me in the corner of my picture. I see angles when I look up in the corners of the walls where the walls come together. Two lines are coming together, pointing, forming a vertex that makes it an angle. The edges of your doors, how your door opens and closes. Your door opens and closes on the hinge, and that is actually forming angles as the door opens and closes. So again, angles are all around us, and if you are doing anything in design or architect or art, angles are so important for you to understand because angles help to deal with the shape of things, how strong things are. Angles have a lot to do with the strength of a building or the strength of a bridge or something that you're creating and angles can help you in art when you are dealing with perspective and just conveying what you're trying to show with your artwork so let's see some of the different types of angles that we will be learning about this year First, we have an acute angle. I always like to go, it's oh so cute because it's our small angle. It is an angle that measures less than 90 degrees. You're going to hear a lot about 90 degree angles. Um, and we're going to talk about what that type of angle is here in just a second. But an acute angle is less than 90 degrees. This is the smallest angle that we have. If you look at the picture, this is the one that would have the least amount of distance in between those two rays, okay? It's not like something that's open really wide. It's only open, like imagine you just open the door just a little bit so you could peek inside. That would be creating an acute angle. And because I always like to have things to help me remember what different words mean, I always remember it's oh so cute, meaning it's our small angle. All right, so that's acute angles. Here we have some examples of acute angles that you may have seen. The first is a tool that can be used in building and construction. I actually have no idea what the tool is called, but maybe you do and you can let me know. The second is a stapler. We have probably seen those. You probably have one around your house someplace. The stapler opens up at an acute angle. And then the third, my favorite food, pizza. Each pizza slice is an acute angle. All right, so there we have some real world examples of acute angles that you might see around you. Can you find any other acute angles in your house? Go ahead and pause and look around your house and see if you can find any acute angles. Next in our angles lineup is the right angle. It's just right, all right? And a right angle is exactly 90 degrees. You see right angles all around you. If you're looking around you're where the walls come together, usually forms right angles. The corners of your doors usually form right angles. Again, the edges of pictures usually form right angles. The pieces of paper usually form right angles. The sides of your books usually form right angles. All right, they're everywhere. Right angles are exactly 90 degrees. You see right angles in squares and in rectangles. And that is why you see a little square right here in the corner. That is a little symbol that signifies a right angle. So when you see that little square in the corner of an angle, you know that that angle is exactly 90 degrees. That's a number you do want to memorize, okay? That's a really, really important number. You have to know right angles are square corners exactly 90 degrees. Say that in your mind right now. Right angles are square corners exactly 90 degrees. If you need to write that down in your math notebook, hit pause and write that sentence down in your math notebook because it is something that you absolutely, absolutely, absolutely have to know. 
All right, so here are some examples of real world right angles. We have the corner of something that's being built where the two pieces of wood come together. Maybe it's a table, maybe it's a bed. I don't know what they're building because we don't really have enough um, information to figure that out. But the two pieces of wood coming together do form a right angle. The piece of paper that the man is holding and in fact also the ruler that the man is holding are forming right angles. And if you look at the super tall building, the each of the windows has right angles in all four corners. Again, we talked about two shapes that ha always have right angles. We have a square and a rectangle. In fact, squares and rectangles only have right angles. There are other shapes that can have right angles or might have one right angle, but squares and rectangles only have right angles. They have four right angles, okay? That's part of what makes them a square or a rectangle. So there's some examples. I want you again to hit pause, go around your house and see how many examples of right angles you can find. I guarantee you, your list will be long. Next up in our angles lineup, we have the obtuse angle. And I always like to say it in a big voice because it's a big angle. It's obtuse. It just asks to be said like that, right? Obtuse. An obtuse angle is an angle that measures more than 90 degrees. So it's bigger than a corner, but it's less than 180 degrees. So it's less than a straight line. It's not quite straight, but it's, it's bigger than a corner. Okay, so imagine you've opened the door up really wide all the way up because you want to see what's in the room, right? That would be an example of an obtuse angle. I could take my book and if I tried to open it up at an acute angle, I'm going to have a hard time reading, right? That would be really tough. Even if I open it up at a right angle, like that's kind of awkward. I'm going to open it up to a more obtuse angle. When I hold the book like this, you see I'm holding it at an obtuse angle. If I hold it at an exactly a right angle, I'm kind of like, that's kind of a weird way to hold a book. And again, acute, I'm not gonna be able to see what's on the page. I wanna hold it up in at an obtuse angle so I can actually read the text. There's an example of obtuse angles for you. So again, obtuse, obtuse, bigger than 90, less than 180. Here we have some real world examples of obtuse angles. We have a recliner that's in its reclined position. We're not sitting up straight, right? We're not leaning over, we're leaning back. That's an obtuse angle. We have a fan that's opened up so that you can fan yourself to cool down. Also makes an obtuse angle. And you guys can see the clock hands at this particular time are forming an obtuse angle. You can actually see all of our different angles on the clocks in different ways. But right here at this time at, it looks like it's 10, 10 on our watermelon clock, we have an obtuse angle. Can you think of any shapes that have obtuse angles? If you think about a rhombus, a rhombus has two obtuse angles and two acute angles usually. So that might be an example. Some of our triangles can have obtuse angles. Some of our shapes like a um, hexagon have obtuse angles, all right? What about your house? Do you have any obtuse angles lying around your house? Or, or around your house? I guess maybe not lying around your house. In your house somewhere? Go ahead and hit pause and see if you can find any obtuse angles. Then come back and we're going to learn about two more types of angles and then we're going to do a little quiz to see if you can figure out the different angle types. All right, so I don't have a trick to remember this angle, but hopefully this one's pretty obvious. It's a straight angle because it's a straight line, right? It's a straight angle because it's a straight line. You do need to memorize that a straight line measures at exactly 180 degrees. That's from one side of the line around to the other side of the line. That measures exactly 180 degrees. That's another number that you have to have memorized. Remember, our just right, right angles are exactly 90 degrees. Straight angles are exactly 180 degrees, not 180 and a half not 179 degrees, they're exactly 180 degrees and they form straight lines. Again, they're everywhere, right? The straight lines and right angles are really what make up most of the things that we see around us. I'm looking at my computer screens right now. They're straight angles and right angles. The buttons on my mouse, 
straight angles, right angles, my phone, straight angles, right angles, okay? So you see them everywhere. Let's look at some examples of where you might see them in real life. So here's our real life examples of straight angles. We have trees, right? They grow straight up. If you measured from one part of the tree to the next part of the tree, it's gonna be exactly 180 degrees. We also have those straight lines in the road that help you to know where the lanes are. Those are other examples of straight angles. What examples do you have around you? Hit pause and go see. The last type of angle name that we need to know is called a reflex angle. Now, this is probably the least common angle type that you will see. This is going to be one of the hardest ones to find, but it would be like, for example, if I were to take my notebook, it's closed, and I opened it up past straight. Let's say I opened it up like this. Okay. That's at, I've opened it at a reflex angle. I have opened it up more than 180 degrees, more than at a straight line. You might see, if you're ever watching like gymnastics, you might see some of them able to bend in ways that are forming reflex angles, right? Or dancers, when they do those split jumps, sometimes their legs are bent further than straight apart. And that angle in between forms the reflex angle. Now you guys can see in this picture, the, the angle is marked by that curved line. That curved line is showing you how those rays opened up around each other. So you can see that this is actually opened up past the a 180 degree mark. Okay. That's kind of just helping you to see where the angle is. I don't have any real world pictures of this one, but look around you, see if you can find any, then come back and we're going to see if you can identify the types of angles. Okay, so it's time to practice, and this is going to be really important practice. I don't want you to skip this part of the video. What's going to happen, I'm not going to narrate the whole rest of the video because I think you guys can do this on your own. It's going to go to the next slide in my presentation, and it's going to show you a picture and three possible answer choices. Think carefully about what we learned about each of our different types of angles today and see if you can identify the angle. Then it will go on to the next slide and it will give you the answer. So you'll be able to check yourself. If you need more time, it gives about five seconds per slide. So if you need more time than five seconds to think about it, hit pause before it goes on to the answer. Don't just let it play through to the end. I really want you guys to think about this and try and answer these on your own. Being able to identify these angles is the key to being able to do anything else with them. So it's really, really, really important that you guys take this time and practice with these examples. Okay. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Good luck with your practice. I hope you get them all right. I know you can do it. Bye guys. All right, so this one I am going to narrate for you and see if you can figure it out. I will let you know when to pause it so that you can answer it before we go over it. But this question right here is a sample question from your fast practice materials. And this question is like what you might see on the fast test. So we're taking our different types of angles. If you just scan over the answer choices, you see the word acute, you see obtuse, you see right. Okay. And we're taking those types of angles and we're seeing if we can identify them in different items, in this case, in different shapes. So what I want you guys to do is pause and think carefully about what each question is asking because it has to be accurate. Remember the question specifically says, which statement correctly describes the figure? So what they are saying has to be accurate. All right, go ahead and hit pause and then I will go over this, but I want you to hit pause and see if you can figure it out without me. Okay. 
So hopefully you have an answer choice if you think it's A, B, C, or D in your head. Let's look at A. It has five acute angles. Remember our acute angles are oh so cute. Those are our small angles. And when I look at these angles, those are all actually obtuse angles. All of the angles in the pentagon are bigger than 90 degrees. If I'm not sure, I can always take something that has a square corner on it and actually hold it up in the in the picture itself to see if the angle is smaller than my square corner because remember my square corner is exactly 90 degrees. Acute angles are smaller than 90 degrees and obtuse angles are bigger. So if it's obtuse, it'll hang out the side. If you did that in this one, they would actually hang out the side. So this one is incorrect. A is incorrect. B, it has four obtuse angles. Well, I notice that every single angle in the rectangle has a little square in it. And remember those squares stand for what? Hopefully you said right angles because that's correct. They do. The little squares in the corner show that that is a right angle. That's a symbol to show that that angle is exactly 90 degrees. Well, if, it's, if all of the angles are right angles, then they're not obtuse angles. They can't be both. Okay, so B is incorrect. Choice C, it has one right angle. All right, let me look. Oh, I see one corner with a square in it. So that means one right angle and two acute angles. My oh so cute angles. Let's look at my other two angles in that triangle. Are they acute? They are, right? So C looks like it's correct. But remember, we always check all four answer choices just to be sure. D says it has two right angles. Do I see any corners with little squares? Nope. So D is automatically going to be incorrect. The answer on this one is C. Did you get it? I hope you did. If you have any questions, let your math teacher know, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.